All right, good morning, I mean good afternoon on the 21st of March, 2024. We're down here at the river. The last time we were down here, the river was up past the palmetto bushes that you're seeing right there. They were almost covered. So you see they're high and dry now. And that bench right there you see in the lower right hand picture, that was underwater. And now it is down. The water is about, by the gauge that they use around these parts, the water is about 10 feet right now. I'll tell you how far it will go down though sometime in the summer you see that cypress tree that's right out past the right hand palmetto bush out in the water that will have no water around it when the river goes down far enough so that's kind of how the river acts around here. That's a fairly deep hole right there. And then it shallows up on the other side of the river. To uh, where you can walk in it. That right there is probably over your head right there. At the this side of the bank. Been hearing an awful lot about the. Donald Trump situation that they've demanding that he pay a 500 million dollar bond well I guess he'll get out of that that's all I'll say once again don't believe everything you hear He's not going to have to pay a $500 million bond. And he's not going to be found guilty in that trial. I don't think. So don't get excited. Stand still. And watch the salvation of the Lord. I believe we are going to have some very scary times into the future. The next year maybe or nine months. But a great deal of what we're being, of what we're hearing, it is my opinion that it is propaganda. But I'll tell you this, we're going to find out something here pretty soon because there's going to be an election or not. It's obvious that Trump is extremely popular with the regular people. And if there are millions of people that wish to vote for Biden... I would say that they are extremely uninformed about what is going on in the world. But we'll see. This is an exciting time to be alive. 
It's getting uh, on to about what time, Debbie? It's a. Uh... It is. Quarter to seven. Quarter to seven here in South Georgia. The sun is beginning to go down. A beautiful day in the 70s. Sorry about wiggling the camera. The mm. river is lazily going by. This river is a very clean river. These small rivers are clean because they don't have any industry built up on them. The bigger rivers, you know, they, some of these big ass companies uh, dump their waste into the rivers and their chemical waste. And I think there are some cities that do that still. The big river here is called the Autumn Hall River. And I do not think that it would be considered clean, although by the standards maybe of the of the Hudson River or some of those rivers in up north, it might be pretty clean. Because we just don't have the population down here that they do up in the northeast. I want to tell you what Jesus said about money. All of us have that subject on our mind because it takes money to live, doesn't it? Jesus said that money, love of money, is the root of all evil. rather than love of God. Now notice he didn't say money was the root. He said the love of money. And he said, wherever your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So money is not bad. It's the love of money. There were quite a few wealthy people in the ancient times in Israel that were considered to be righteous believers. Abraham, quite wealthy. King David, there was a number of them. Joseph of Arimathea, so money is good but not the love of money. So how do you know when you're loving money rather than just using it for what it should be used for? When you do things that you would not want people to do unto you to get money, that's when you love money. Stealing, you wouldn't want people to steal from you. Trashing them at the job so they won't get promoted, some people do that. That's the love of money. And there's many other things. Using money to rule other people and to get people to do things that you would not want them to do to you? I'll tell you one example of it. It's a big example, and that is prostitution. The, the women, by and large, now I've had some kickback on this, but most of the women involved in prostitution uh, are doing it for money. And now they may love money too, but a lot of times they're just trying to get by. Now that doesn't excuse it. 
But the people that are paying these women are taking advantage of them. Prostitution are, and pornography are, they go hand in hand. One is on the right hand and one is on the left hand. And a lot of people get into that pornography and they get where they can't stop. It's like an addiction. Just like gambling becomes an addiction. Well, Jesus can help you stop it. You know it's wrong. And that's such a powerful addiction that it takes Jesus to get you out of it. If you're caught up in that, if you're caught up in being a prostitute, if you're caught up in drug addiction, if you're caught up in alcohol addiction, if you're caught up in money addiction, if you're caught up in gambling addiction, if you turn to Jesus and ask him to save you, that's what he's here for. That's what he came for, is to save the brokenhearted. He came to save the brokenhearted. He came to set the captives free. That's people that are captured by those addictions. Power is one of them. Gambling. Prostitution. Pornography. Scamming people. You think about all those phone calls you get and there'll be a foreign sounding person on the other end talking about some kind of great deal that they have for you. I found one of the quickest ways to get rid of those people. You ought to try this sometime. When I get a call from somebody and they're telling me that I won some kind of a lottery somewhere in India or something like that and all I have to do is send two hundred dollars and they can release the money to me and there's just innumerable scams you know what I do I start witnessing Jesus to them I tell them hey what's your name I find out what their name is I say you know you're trying to steal from me and that's a sin I'd like you to I'd like to introduce you to Jesus Christ. He can save you from that. And you'll be proud of the work you do. You talk about somebody getting off the phone quick, that'll get them off the phone. I love doing that. I think they put me on a list over there and said, "Don't call this guy anymore cuz you ain't going to get to first base with him. He's going to throw Jesus on you." Try it sometime. You'll have fun. Well, let's see. I'm up to, uh, let me get my glasses out here. I didn't think I was going to get to make a video today, but I came down here to check on some stuff. I'm up to 13 minutes. I'd like to, um, I'd like to say the most important thing in my mind these days that Jesus ever said. I'm not saying there aren't more, because some, it depends on what your situation is, which one of the Jesus' teachings gets to you the most. But try this one on for size. Or put this in your pipe and smoke it, as the old saying goes. Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. And I am the life. I am the way, the highway, that leads to salvation. I am the truth. He's the truth, the only truth, not a truth, the truth. And I am the life. He is the life. That's what life is, is Jesus. He's the one that made us. 
He holds life in his hand, in his body, in his spirit. And he's offered that to us. And he's offered to set us free. To set us free from our addictions. I'm sure I missed a lot of them. But I named the, uh, the big ones, the ones I know about. Some of those addictions got a hold of me one time. And Jesus saved me out of it. He set me free. I took his advice. I don't know why. I don't know how I got to where I believed. It seems to be supernatural. But I took his yoke upon... Did you hear that woodpecker? He really let it rip. Tater chip. Come on, woodpecker. Do that again. Jesus said, take his burden. Put your, your yoke upon his shoulders and let him carry it for you. And that's what I did. And I'm not saying that I don't have to, you know, that I don't get tired and that I don't get grumpy sometimes and that I, ha that I don't have problems. I have problems. But the quicker I turn it over to him, the lighter the burden gets. He won't give you more than you can handle. And if you keep on trying to carry that heavy weight on your own shoulders, it will grind you into the ground. It will grind you to powder. That's another saying. Jesus said, He who falls on the stone, and that's Jesus, he's the stone. The woodpecker agrees. He who falls on the stone will be broken, but he on whom the stone falls will be crushed to powder. So if you keep trying to carry that heavy burden, you will be crushed to powder. And that means done away with for eternity. We're still going to get old. We're still going to get tired. Jesus is going to give us the strength, though, to bear with it and to keep a smile on our face. And to have enough get up and go to where we might be able to, you know, help some people sometimes. Somebody needs a little help, a little advice. A shoulder to cry on, maybe. And that's what the Christian is called to do. And to declare the name of Jesus before men. I believe, I haven't taken a survey, but I believe that I'm seeing a lot more people, regular Christians, just regular everyday people making videos about Jesus. And I'm amazed sometimes at how young some of these people are and how much they know about the Bible. That is amazing to me that Jesus is teaching these people in their 20s and early 30s and they have a passion to get on YouTube. I say more power to them. And I encourage anybody to do that. Come up with a ministry. Any kind. You know, you, whatever you're good at. Maybe you're good at computers. Figure out a way to do it that way. I'm horrible at computers because I'm not of the age of computers. We used manual typewriters when I was in high school. You had to put a dime in a phone, in a phone booth to talk and call somebody. No cell phones, no nothing like that. You had antennas on your house to pick up the local television. The local television station 
in Savannah. The reception was pretty bad. I'm probably 100 miles from Savannah. We watched Captain Sandy with the weather. Anybody watched that? Make a comment about it. You got to be pretty old and you got to be from South Georgia to know about Captain Sandy. They had a little song they sang. And he had some kind of a puppet thing that came down from the ceiling and came into the camera view. A kind of a, I think it was a pelican. Had a name and they would take, the pelican would come down and have some kind of message in his mouth and Captain Sandy would take it and read it. Howdy Doody. Captain Kangaroo. Those were the kind of things we watched when we were kids. And here's one I bet you'd never heard of. Wrestling was pretty big on TV back then. Of course, it was all black and white. And it was pretty much fake like it is now. But how about Haystack Calhoun? He was a probably close to 500 pound guy. Was supposed to be some kind of a rural farmer type guy. Haystack Calhoun. I think he was a hero. I'm not sure. He might have been an anti-hero. Anybody ever heard of him? I'm just reminiscing. And of course, they were the the cartoons, Popeye the Sailor. And a lot of other ones. If there's anybody still listening to me, I would like to say the Lord's Prayer to end this, and I would like you out there to say it with me. I'm imagining in my mind that there's quite a few people out there, and we're going to say the Lord's Prayer. And we're going to hold Jesus up right now and show our love for our Savior. This is the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples when they asked him, Lord, how should we pray? Teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Gardner Israel, signing off.